Hi, this is another Unity from scratch tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a sky to your um, terrain, which we created in the previous tutorial. So what we've created so far is a landscape um, and we've modeled it on Lake Louise. I've also now added in a first person controller so that I can actually walk around inside this environment. And if you followed through in the previous tutorial, you'll notice I've also added a lot more um, objects into the scenery. Okay, so if you want to get hold of the FPS controller, that's in Assets, Import, Package, Characters, and that will give you your um, FPS controller. As for all of the other terrain assets, um, I got those from a previous version of Unity where they first started bringing in this terrain editing and they had a whole bunch of trees and rocks and flowers and all sorts of things. Now, um, I can't find those in the asset store for you, but what I've done is I have zipped them up and put them on my website at um, holistic3d.com forward slash resources. You'll find something called terrain assets there that you can download. Just drag and drop the uh, folder into your assets and that will give you access to a whole bunch of um, bushes, grass, rocks uh, and trees, etc., which you can use with the terrain sculpting tool as I showed you previously. Now once you've dragged and dropped your uh, first person controller prefab into the scene, which allows you to automatically walk around and look around, you'll also need to delete the camera that already exists in here. Uh, because the FPS controller has its own camera, so you won't need the old camera anymore. Um, right, so that gives you the ability to look around. Now, if we have a look in this environment, I've also turned on the shadows. Um, and as I spoke about before with the settings of the terrain where you could set the wind speed, you can see the effect now happening here uh, with the grass and these flowers that I've added. Now, just before we continue, to turn on the shadows uh, will be a matter of finding your directional light that's in the scene and go over to the shadow type. By default, if you've drag and dropped it in there, usually it will be set to no shadows, uh, but you want to set it to hard shadows or I guess soft shadows, depending on the, the kind of look that you want, whether it's really harsh sun or whether it's a bit of a... Um, more of a cloudy ambient light day. Um, I guess that's up to you. But what we're going to look at now um, and fix is the issue of our sky. So we've got this beautiful default unity blue sky going on, which doesn't really do it much justice, um, the terrain. So what we're actually looking at here is the background of the camera at the very far, it renders this uh, blue, which is kind of everywhere. And it has no special structure to it. It's just a solid blue color that's at the very far of your drawing. Just in the same way that over in the scene here, you have this very far gray color that's going on. Now the camera is um, able to render different types of skies based on you, how you've set it up. Now, the default sky, if we find the camera, which is now attached to our first person controller, um, you can find it here. So this is the same as just a default camera, is that at the very top of the settings, it has this uh, clear flags, which is a sky box, solid color, depth only or don't clear for the um, background. Now, the background itself, you can set to a solid color, which you can then set using this here. So if you wanted like a pink sky, you could set it like that um, and then you'd be getting around with a pink sky which looks pretty disgusting um, or we can go back to our blues if you want a blue sky something like that now often you'll want a sky that has a bit more interest in it and that's where these sky boxes come into their own a sky box is structured in what's called a cube map and you have to think of it like a huge cube that you've put over the top of your entire environment and that wherever the player goes, that cube goes with it. So it's like this massive 
enormous cube-shaped helmet sitting over the top of your character. And because it's kind of moving with your character, you can never, ever get to the edges of it. Um, so you'll never reach the end of the sky box. But what's really nice about the sky box is because it's a cube, it's only got six faces. Now, because the cube's over the top of the player, you're looking at the inside textures that are placed on that cube. And they're placed very cleverly so that you can't see the seams. Now, here's an example here that I found on the web um, of a cube map. And you'll see that it's um, basically a cube. If you've ever made one of these sorts of fold-up cubes in school, you draw this and then you cut it out and you fold them at all of the edges and then sticky tape them together and you end up with a cube. And it's the same with a cube map. It's working the same way that these images are on each part of the cube and where they join, they're actually seamless. Okay, so you can't tell when they folded where those folds are. So a sky doesn't have any uh, shadows put on it either because otherwise you would be able to see the corners. So the quickest and easiest way to get a great sky is to use a sky box. To create a sky box is a matter of creating a material. Uh, if you go into create in the project and create a new material, let's just call this sky for now. Um, and to that we set the shader of the sky to sky box six-sided. Uh, now you won't be able to see that because it's slightly off the screen. I'll just move this over and where are we? Sky box six-sided and the six-sided sky box is going to give you a spot to put in your front image, your back image, your left, your right, your up and your down which are the same ones that we saw um, a moment ago. And if you have those textures, you can put them in there and create your sky. Now, the easier way of creating a sky is to download something from the asset store. And this will have a whole bunch of materials that are already constructed for you. And there's a whole heap of free ones uh, on that store. Now, I've um, already downloaded some and they're just in this folder in my assets, Day Night Sky Boxes. Um, and under the materials, we can have a look at all of these sky boxes that have already been set up for us. Now, to set the sky box in your game environment is not a matter of going to the camera. So the camera where you can actually set it to display a sky box in this clear flags part, there's nowhere in here where you actually set the sky box itself. That's in a completely separate area. So to do that, we go to window and we find the lighting window. Okay, so here it is here. And in the scenes tab of the lighting window, you'll see that there's an um, environment lighting section right at the top and it has sky box. And that's where we put our material. So if we click on the um, little select button next to it. We're going to get all of the materials that are in our environment. You can see uh, all of the tree, trunk, branches, leaves, flowers and all that in there as well. Um, now the ones I've just downloaded, the skies themselves, we can just type in sky to find those actual sky box materials. And um, depending on your mood will depend on which one you want to pick. So let's go with afternoon cloudy sky. Just double click on that and then we just go back into Unity. You can leave this window floating around uh, and let's play and have a look if we can see our new sky. Okay, so there it is. Now the sky box, it doesn't move. Okay, it's just a static cube, inside out cube with textures on it, but it just provides some extra interest in the actual scene and even if we could fly um, we'd never ever ever reach that skybox okay it's always rendered right at the back of everything now i can also demonstrate what happens when we want to create a more um, 
colder mystical mystical type environment by adding some fog because often you'll want fog in your environment instead of um, having such a clear scene like this so let's imagine that we're sort of becoming into winter at Lake Louise and we want to make it look a bit more like it's about to snow so let's just stop playing for a moment now the fog itself if you go back into that lighting window is set right down the bottom and it's just down here okay so there's this little tick box if we tick that it will turn the fog on now um, you can also select the actual color that you want for the fog but I'm going to leave it to this grayish kind of color at the moment you can also set the mode of the fog of how quickly it gets thick okay so you've got a linear sort of thickness where it gets um, thicker at the same rate um, as distance goes you've got an exponential and an exponential squared where it will get um, like doubly as thick the further it goes and then even like even more thick the further it goes in so um, linear is kind of a less dense fog and exponential is squared is very dense fog okay so with that fog just ticked and nothing else changed if we go back to our scene and just run it you'll be able to see the effect that adding that fog has had on the environment let's just walk back out here and have a look at those mountains so you can see where the fog has been applied it's been applied to the geometry so the trees and the terrain itself has had fog applied to it but the skybox hasn't Okay, because the skybox is special, it's not actually a geometry inside of the world and fog is added to the geometry only. Now, can you have a skybox and have fog at the same time? No. Okay, so the best way to deal with this is to make the sky the same color as the fog. Actually, no, I do lie. You could have a skybox, but you would have to have the skybox at um, sort of the lowest levels to be the same color as the fog. And then up here in the middle of the sky, you could have something else. Um, but what we want to make it look like is that the fog and the skybox is exactly the same color so that you can't tell where one ends and one starts. So, yes, you could have a skybox that was that same color gray. Um, and make it blend together but the easiest way to do it if I just stop playing there is to get rid of our skybox altogether and set the background of the camera to be solid and the color of the actual fog uh, so the easiest way to do this rather than juggling color values around is to use the eyedropper tool that's next to your color and then after you've selected it find somewhere in your scene that is the color of the fog um, in this case you can see it in this game view that this stuff in the background is that gray now when we run it we'll see that the mountains have disappeared into the sky because they're now the same color as the sky. So it gives you the illusion that there is fog. Now fog is calculated on your distance from objects. So as you move closer to them, they start to emerge from the fog. So there's less fog applied on them. Um, and you can see here that that mountain of trees is now covered in fog. But as we get closer, it becomes more visible. Now, of course, it's looking um, a little bit unrealistic because the actual environment looks like springtime with the lighting in springtime and then we have this dark cloud of fog coming over so if you're going to apply that then you need to think about your lighting that you've got in the scene whether you need to make it duller or not and um, the actual scenery itself so we could turn the lighting right down we could also make the fog an awful lot thicker um, so just to see the effects of that if we go back to our window lighting and come down to our fog settings we can change the density underneath the fog mode uh, and turn it up now you only want to turn up a little bit okay so what I might do is try and move my camera around in here so we see more of 
the scene. Uh, let's see, let's rotate it. Okay, so there's the scene. And in the window lighting section, um, under fog, there's this density. And we can just move that around. And you'll see how quickly it becomes denser as we modify that. Now, if we put this down to a linear fog, it's going to be less dense. And you can also have a start and an end for that um, of where it is. So it can start like right back or you can bring the start up close to the camera itself. Now for realistic real world type fog we usually use the um, exponential setting and it will only take little tiny values as well. So see by the time we get to one we've got everything basked in fog. So 0 0.01 gets you about that and then you've got two then you've got three, four. Um, and so you start to lose a lot of the detail of the objects that are further back. Um, the other thing is you've got the shader on the water that's also being slightly affected by this. In this kind of foggy environment, the water itself would not be that kind of blue because water reflects the sky and that's what gives it its color um, besides a few other things. But if you want to set your watercolor to be more realistic of the scene that you're in, then you've got um, color settings within that where you can just pick something like the gray. And now I've made that water gray. Last but not least, if you want to make the environment look even more um, dull, you can turn the color intensity down on the directional light that's in the scene. So here's our directional light here. And if we grab hold of the intensity value for it, if you turn it right down, you can see, or up, you can see the effect that that light has. So you could actually turn it right down. You probably don't want it to be right, right down. Um, you still want some light in there. That will give you, um, the kind of effect that it's more of a miserable foggy scene. So if we just have a look around now. Okay, we've got a better color going on in the water and the fog is looking better and it's a lot sort of less bright um, than our summery spring scene that we had before. Um, okay, so that's the end of this tutorial for setting fogs and skyboxes. In the next tutorial, I'm going to start looking at adding uh, some clouds into the environment that give you the illusion of a volumetric fog, which is like patches of fog that appear and move throughout the environment, not this total fog that gets covered over everything.